boundary wire is inexpensive. Gen GPS RTK is the only to perimeter wire is boundary bad. wire. No boundary wire is less GPS more boundary wire is only infinite range. How to set up the how to connect to entry. There are cracks in the wheels already. This project will be way harder than I thought. In the previous part of Indie Mower project, I started with an idea of replacing a traditional lawn mower with a robot. I explained how this kind of robot works and started working on the first prototype built out of plywood and 3D printed parts, which really didn't work as I wanted it to, so I took it all apart to build the robot all over again. At this point it was just remotely controlled via smartphone but it was definitely able to cut some grass and it was really fast so I performed some longer testing on this square of grass and it worked really well. I also forgot to include this super cool slow motion footage so here it is. But today it won't be remotely controlled anymore because we will automate it with a perimeter wire. Welcome to Indie Mower part 2. But wait, where is the GPS RTK? No worries, I will get later to GPS RTK versus perimeter wire, but firstly, let me work on the generator circuit. So, step one is definitely to untangle the perimeter wire. Well, step one should be to explain everything so that you know how it works. Here is the perimeter wire and the lawn mower should always stay inside the perimeter wire. We don't want to cut the flowers and we don't want it to escape to the neighbor. To build the generator I will use Raspberry Pi Pico, MOSFET and perimeter wire. With a simple program it will generate a square wave inside the perimeter wire. For the sensor I will use a coil, capacitor and operational amplifier to detect, filter and amplify the signal so that it can be detected with a micro controller. Just like that we'll have a square wave in the perimeter wire that will be detected with the sensor and the output of the sensor will be a sine wave because the signal will be distorted. The closer the sensor is to the perimeter wire the higher the amplitude of the signal and the frequency I will be using is 5 kilohertz. Some people complain that I'm not an engineer because my desks are too clean so here they are not and I'm working on the generator circuit and trying to figure out what's going on with an oscilloscope. I even tried making my own coils, which didn't work at all. I thought this is an amplifier, this is an inductor and I'm detecting a frequency in this perimeter wire cable. So if I simply connect a very small speaker to that, I should be able to hear the signal from this perimeter wire. In this case, it's just a 5 kilohertz square wave. Now if I connect the speaker to the amplifier and move the perimeter wire really close to the coil, You can't hear anything, <laughs> but it was working a minute ago. I have a degree in computer science, so let me turn it off and on. Does it work? Yes, I can hear the signal, but I'm not sure if you will be able to hear it on the camera. So let's move it a bit closer. All of those experiments were performed using random parts I found when disassembling old electronic devices, but when I ordered proper coils, capacitors and amplifiers, the difference was, well, quite significant. And you can clearly hear that the signal is pretty loud. It was still running at just 5 volts, so increasing the voltage from 5 to 12 volts would make it even easier to detect the perimeter wire. But I really wanted to see it moving, so I connected the sensor, the detector circuit that I built, to one of my robots that I used when building my machine learning robot. And it totally worked. In the past I built an Arduino based guitar tuner, I used FFT Fast Fourier Transform to do all the computations and figure out the frequencies, and I wanted to use the same to detect the perimeter wire and 5 kHz frequency, but it turned out to be a problem and it wasn't reliable. Maybe the frequency was too high and Arduino was not able to keep up with all the computations, so I found a different method online and I used this one, but then I thought about using a peak detector circuit or envelope detector, I think it's called. It didn't work, we'll get to that later. And that's how pretty much every single load mowing robot works. It's really simple. Yeah, so it's Why the boundary wire and not GPS RTK? GPS RTK means Global Positioning System Real-Time Kinematics. 
It's actually GNSS RTK, but never mind, it's not really that important. It allows to have the accuracy of positioning of about 1 to 2 centimeters, which is crazy accurate and definitely good for such a project. The problem is, of course, the price. Such modules start at like $500 and can easily go up to $1,000 or even more, which is a lot of money and you can buy a lot of perimeter wire for this price. You also need two of these modules because you have to set up a base station and then have the other DPS on the robot because this is how the RTK technology works. In Poland, we have a network of stations with real-time kinematics data and as far as I know, we can just connect to this network via a protocol called Entrip, and it's totally free, I think, you can just set up an account. I also found this GPS RTK module, which is kind of inexpensive, it's less than $100, and I think I could use that with the RTK system in Poland, so I don't need a base station. I will try to experiment with that in the future. But the problem with this kind of solutions is that I'm trying to create an open source project for, like, all the people all over the world. And when I will show you in the video that I did this setup with a network that is based in Poland, then basically I'm creating a project that can be built only in Poland or require some serious modifications. Also, thank you for all the suggestions to use like the toy parts or old car parts or even buy a used lawnmower and rebuild it like all the electronics inside. But that's not the goal of Indymower project. I try to make it as easy to build for anyone and when you tell someone that he needs like a specific motor from a specific car from a specific year or to buy a used lawnmower, it really makes it very very hard to build such a project. That's why I always stick to only the parts that you can actually buy in the store. Because I'm not using my watering system at the moment, I decided to use that since it already has Raspberry Pi Pico, a MOSFET and is nicely organized on a PCB and it can easily generate a 5kHz square wave with just a few lines of Python code. And then I wanted to start on the front obstacle sensor for this robot. I bought these switches but they are really not suitable for this kind of project so I started designing something completely from scratch, first on paper and then in CAD. The idea was a front bumper with flexible prints that could flex back and forth and act as a spring here and the bumper was just a simple PLA print just for testing and the springiness of the mechanism worked very very well, it wasn't super easy to assemble and definitely a lot of things to improve for the future but as you can see the bumper worked fine and I even added it to the robot, but this is like definitely not the final solution. Front obstacle sensor is working, but I'm totally unhappy with it and I will probably change it later. And the option, the functionality I'm looking into the most is using a current sensor on the wheels of the robot and that way detecting whether it hit some kind of obstacle. I actually wanted to do it already now, but I have current sensors rated for 30 amps which is way over like what these motors can use. So let's stick to my design of the obstacle sensor. The front bumper did not match my expectations, but failing and learning is a part of the process. And the latter I like the most and practice almost every single day. Thanks to the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning community with thousands of classes led by industry experts. You can find here classes focused on design, electronics, Arduinos, and even Fusion 360. I do all the planning and scripting of my videos with Notion, and thanks to the class made by Ali Abdal, I learned how to use all of its functions as well as understand how it really works. What I like the most are lessons where other creators share their Notion setup. Notion, as well as this class, are cool and help me a lot in my work. But of course, if you are more into making rather than planning, there is a great class by Mark Fraunfelder that teaches you the basics of Arduino boards, from installing all the software to controlling different devices. With this class you can go very quickly from nothing to programming your first microcontrollers. And if you prefer programming Raspberry Pi Pico with Python like I did in this video, or even normal computers, the class by Alvin One called Coding 101 Python for Beginners will be perfect for you. You will learn about the basics of Python, which will be useful in robotics, data science and web development. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Go check out the link in the description. Thanks a lot to Skillshare for sponsoring and now back to the video. Now we are moving into a shed that I built with my dad, it's my new workshop and here we'll finish the generator. So here is the workshop, it's still work in progress, I have some materials there, a lot of things to clean up and organize. Here projects are planned and here projects are built 
here's my tool with all the tools even more tools down there mobile workstation with all the power tools my old PCB from the watering system few additional parts perimeter wire all of that will be stick to this board placed in the container and closed so that it's all waterproofed I'm pretty sure that it will be very convenient to have the perimeter wire somewhere there because here I can connect it to the power and just this space is very restricted let's say the power won't go away of the perimeter wire very far but I will be always present during the first test just to make sure that everything works fine and is safe almost no measuring at all it was just all eyeballed and it fits perfectly on the first try that was very lucky and here is the perimeter wire it goes there 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 here's the corner turns right there stops right in front of the flowers these are the kind of flowers that uh, when your project kills the flowers your mom kills you so we are better a few centimeters from the flowers goes there, turns there and it's connected back to the generator of course this is just a generator built based on one of my old PCBs it's not gonna be a final solution because the final solution requires a robot base station that will charge the robot, it will control the perimeter wire and it will communicate wirelessly with the robot the last part is very important because when there is a power outage you need to instantly stop the robot because you have no power in the perimeter wire so it can easily escape it I will probably use NRF24L01 because it's inexpensive, it's easy to use and it's long range so perfect for this kind of application in case you are curious how I developed a program for this I just grabbed the code of the robot that I used at home to test the perimeter wire then I grabbed the code from the previous video of this lawnmower I combined them together never tested and now I hope it will work following the rule that the easiest fix is always the best I just call the drive inside wire function in the loop and that way there's just no way that it won't work yeah but I forgot to increase the speed that I cannot increase now without the Bluetooth connection and it just drove completely on top of the wire and I know why because the wire is not connected to the power it's try number three I think will it stop? yes perfect perfect let's see it now Yes, it's very sensitive, maybe even too sensitive, so I set the threshold to 0.1 Maybe like 0.15 will be enough But it seems to be working very very well And not destroying the flowers, which is very important And now it might be a good moment to subscribe to my channel And if you would like to learn more about IndieMower, visit industry.cc slash IndieMower or scan the QR code Welcome to the outside laboratory where I'm trying to get this project to work and what I'm trying to do now is to check whether the perimeter wire sensor is working properly and I have also built a peak detector circuit or what is also called an envelope detector it's just a an resistor and capacitor connected together with proper values to detect the 5 kHz signal that I have in the perimeter wire and thanks to that I should be able to just simply uh, read the value with the analog pin without any complicated math or functions and computations on the Arduino that should simplify the problem a lot and then I want to work on following the wire because that is required to actually reach the home base and recharge the robot which will be useful for the next video
Well, following this kind of line is not as easy as building a simple line follower robot, so I will probably improve it later. And during a longer test it performed very well and sometimes escaped the perimeter wire, but it was because of the corners where it gets lost and it's just a matter of improving the program or adding more sensors so it will be an easy fix. And at this point we have a bit of a problem. I'm deeply dissatisfied with this project, unfortunately. It's way too slow, it's not powerful enough, I'm moving too slowly with like building this robot, it's not heavy enough, like there's a lot of things to change. But remember that all that I did up to now are just prototypes, MVP, minimum viable product, just to see if building it makes sense and if it is really possible to do it in a DIY fashion, let's say. And right now it's time to start working on something that I could call Indie Mower Mark 1. It will be a lot bigger, it will be heavier, it will be nice looking, I hope, so there's a lot of work I have to do when it comes to building the new base, printing the new bigger wheels, redesigning everything, making it look nice and creating a waterproof enclosure for all the electronics. Finally, making electronics nice and not just, you know, a lot of things connected with breadboard cables. Then there is of course safety that has to be implemented in this robot and robot base station. I want to replace the motors, I complained about buying expensive motors in my previous video. This time I bought more and these are even more expensive. These motors are slower and have higher torque, but most importantly they have encoders. Encoders will let me control the speed, rotational speed of the motor and set it at a constant value. So the robot will go at the same speed uphill and downhill and it will always go in a straight line and not turning in a circle like it does now. As you can see the power of the motor is not balanced and it basically almost did a perfect circle there. There is still a lot of work to do, but working on this kind of robots is a lot of fun for me. If you like this project and would like to learn more, visit industry.cc slash indiemower, there is a link in the description. And thanks a lot to Skillshare, the sponsor of this video, they are helping me a lot to develop the indiemower, so go check out Skillshare, link is in the description. And see you in the next part of indiemower project.